You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, are you making time to study for the Part 107 exam? You should be. That's right, you should be. If you don't have time though, but you need dedicated, focused, secure time. You need to go to the Part 107 live training in Newport Beach, California, Come August on. 25th and 26th with Drone U. Why? Because you're going to be focused. You're going to have dedicated time and you're going to be taught by FAA certified flight instructors. So you know you're going to get good information. On top of that, you're going to get the study guide. We're going to go through quizzes and official FAA test questions just to make sure that you can get the most out of this as possible. Now, if you can't go, guess what? There's a live training. There is a live training. Like, when I mean live, I mean a live stream. Yes. So you don't even have to be there. You can have the dedicated time, distraction free, and literally live stream into the class for about half the price. Now, are you ready to go? Are you ready to move and make an action? Because I think you should be if you really want to live the drone life. So go to DroneUlive.com. That's Drone, the letter U, Live.com. And make sure to attend that class or sign up for the live stream. And if you use the coupon code that Rob made as a mistake, which is... D-U-107-C-A. All caps. Please. Then you'll save 50 bucks for being a listener of the podcast. It's our way of saying thank you. Yes. So now we're quickly running out of space, so go sign up. And welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I am Rob. And this is... Episode. 401. Very exciting. We're on to a new level. The 400s. I still remember when we sat at my desk in our old office with a Zoom recorder and no microphones, and here we are now. Crazy, yeah, lots happened in a fairly short amount of time, but you guys are awesome. Thank you for sticking with us, hanging in there with us, and being great listeners. Yeah, no, we really do appreciate it. And again, if you need a study guide for part 107, it is free for members. If you wanna become a member, go to thedroneu.com. But let's just get right into today's question. Hey, Paul, hey, Rob, it's Mark in Grand Junction, Colorado. Hey, quick question, I enjoyed your episode recently on the batteries and uh, battery life, how many charges, voltage, that kind of thing. That was uh, very informative. I did have one question about it. I know recently I've seen some comments about topping off your batteries if they've been sitting for a few days. So one question I see if you know the answer to. If, um, say, I have a battery that's been sitting for a few days, still shows four bars, and I top it off, would that count as another charge cycle for that battery? Um, I know that was one reference you had was, you know, above 50, 75 cycles on batteries, you need to start uh, looking at them. So if you're doing that often, does that falsely or perhaps accurately elevate that charge cycle number or not? Probably a simple test I can just uh, try to do and figure that out, but I've not done that yet. So curious to see what your thoughts are there and uh, appreciate your work. Thanks, guys. It's another great question. Thanks, Mark. Uh, appreciate you being a member, a long time member, actually. And uh, yeah, we, we don't take that for granted. So thank you. I would think there's a lot of people. It's amazing how many questions we get about batteries. I think one of the reasons is they're so darn expensive. People want to really know how to take care of them. Well, they're expensive. They can burn your house down. There is that. That would make them really expensive. Mm -hmm. But no, I think it's a good question. So speak to that. Is that is it a cycle if you're almost fully charged, but you go ahead and charge it to full? Um, yes. The answer is yes. Okay. Uh, it does count as a cycle, and I highly recommend people. In fact, someone even asked me this weekend, hey, if uh, I'm using a drone battery and it's at 65% and then I uh, you know, charge it back to full, is that bad for the battery? And the answer is yes. Hmm. Um, you really want to deplete it as much as possible and then charge it back up. It, you, you know, This isn't a high amperage pull, so you don't want to be racing your drone around all the time to uh, deplete the battery. Right. You want to just make sure it's depleted. Every 10 cycles, you know, you're doing a deep cycle charge, which means you fly the drone until you get your battery limit, uh, bring the landing gear down, and just keep it hovering until it's absolute dire about to land, and then let the drone turn itself off. Right. 
and you'll get it to below 5% and then fully charge it after that. Okay. Um, so if you read the part 107 information on operations too, in your checklist, there's actually a very specific line item that you're looking for if the battery is bulging, mm-hmm. um, if it seems like it's had any wear or tear, like there's a hole or something, you know, not to use the battery. Um, but I would say there are so many things beyond that to check. Yes, after 75 cycles, you need to really be focusing on that battery. Is the voltage at startup the same as a brand new battery? Because a right. brand new battery voltage startup is going to be 4.29, 4.3 right. or higher. Um on startup unloaded, meaning the motors are not running. This is like you just fired the bird up and it's the it, yeah. initial uh, indicator that you're seeing. So if you have a battery on startup that's at 4.19, 4.15, 4.1, you really need to focus on uh, the health and safety of that battery. You probably should not fly it lower than 50%. You could have a, a voltage drop. But a, but a battery like you just described, you could fly it. You just better be very aware of the fact that you're, you're you're dealing with less power to begin with. Yes. Then obviously a good battery. Yes. But you could go ahead and fly it. Yes. Okay. All right. So kind of following up and just to clarify, I guess, it's okay to, if you've got a 50, 60, 70% battery, go ahead and move it up to 100%. But no. after five to 10 times, then you want to deep cycle it. You really want to go as low as you can every single time. Okay. You know, 50 is okay, but you really want to go as low as you can every single time. All and right. yes, if you have a battery at 85% and you charge it to 100, it's going to count as a cycle. Wow. So, okay. I mean, this is why... Uh, one of the reasons why that we use the batteries that we do is we would get a lot more cycles out of, out of a lithium ion battery, mm-hmm. like the batteries that are in your phone, right? right. Can be cycled a thousand times. Sure. Um, the, you know, the lithium polymer batteries though can discharge more amperage or discharge more energy in a shorter amount of time. That's why we use those batteries. Which is necessary to operate the drone. Exactly. Sure. But also we get a diminishing return. So mm-hmm. Every time we cycle that battery, we're, we're limiting its life. Um, so at the same time, we don't have nearly as many cycles as we do with a lithium-ion battery. Sure. But a lithium-ion battery would not really support the drone. Yeah, and I guess the theory with a lithium-ion battery, it's really similar. I mean, you want to be discharging that battery down to, cl- what, 15, 20% mm-hmm. regularly as well to yes. keep that battery healthy. Yep. Not and that you we're never, a cell phone show. But. And you never want to let your phone battery get to zero, ever. That's really, really, really bad. Which, as I understand it from you, the software is designed to keep you from letting that happen. Your phone says zero. It's actually probably 20, 20%. 25%. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's exactly correct. So that's a software thing. Um, With Android phones, I think it's only 10 to 15%. So Hmm. it's funny. My buddy, who's an iPhone user, he switched over to Android. He was just like, ah, I lost so many features. I have to go back. He's regretting it. (laughs) Is that right? Interesting. But I've, I've read an interesting stat that people who are Android and switch to iPhone phone, like six out, of, six out of 10 times go back to Android because they're so familiar and comfortable with how it Android is. works. It is. It's just what you're comfortable with and not wanting to... They're so different, those yeah. operating systems that I can understand that. And I would think that's vice versa. I think probably fewer people go from Apple to Android than people that go from Android to Apple. I'd agree. But anyways, I don't know how we got on that. I Batteries. Just, we thought we could end the podcast with some battery information Something on your very cell phone. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, Mark, thank you very much for the question again. And guys, if you have a question, please go to ask askdroneu.com. Thankfully, we've got a nice backlog of questions. Um, So if you send yours in and it takes us a little while to get to it, forgive us. We will get to it. We appreciate every single one of them. And just remember, if you have a question, somebody out there does as well. In fact, a lot of people out there that are listening have that same question. I promise you. So get them in. Like, can you pan, tilt, and zoom with the Z3? Nope, you can't. Ah. Unless you got a dual operator. I was thinking people were going to notice that in my Facebook post, but no one noticed or realized that. Hmm. So anyway, I thought it was very interesting. Thank you so much for listening. As always, whether you're listening from the car, you subscribe to us on YouTube and you watch the videos so you can see his shiny head and all the cool things that we show you on the podcast. (laughs) Wherever you're listening, thank you. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.